Okay, today on a bench we actually have three things. We have a uh, early 40 channel radio. This is a Cobra 29, but this is not the normal Cobra 29 that most people are familiar with seeing. It is not an LTD. This is a 29 GTL. Uh, in as about as close to mint condition as you can get. <laughs> really, really nice shape. Um, along with this, the customer sent in a BK Cobra transistorized compression amplifier and a Telex Turner 253 microphone. Um, microphone needed some help, and it's probably the main reason I'm doing the video on this. Well, other than to maybe show that, because that's kind of a rare accessory, too. But uh, microphone needed some help. Um, the compression amplifier was not actually made by B&K, uh, and actually the B&K is actually the same B&K as in like B&K meter there, signal generator, you know, it's the same same test equipment company, you know, B&K uh, Precision, uh, Dynascan, yeah, all, you know, conglomerate of companies over the years, I guess mergers and whatnot, but uh, yeah, same B&K, and you can see the logo looks the same as it does on the uh, test equipment. Um, but, uh, this is a, comp uh, like I say, transistorized compression amplifier. Um, so this has been, had the electrolytic capacitors replaced in it, and I put a new 9-volt battery snap connector on it. The battery actually snaps into that little holder down inside there. Um, I'm not going to install the battery and snap it in there, because that's my battery. <laughs> so, um... One thing I did have to do to this modification-wise was the original input jack on this thing was an antique-style 4-pin Amphenol plug. So it was huge. <laughs> it was a really, really big plug. Uh, the kind of plug that you would see on old tube-type uh, radios. It's not the modern 4-pin style that has a much smaller plug. So I had, uh, and, and the customer wanted that changed over to accept modern 4-pin style plugs. Uh, problem with that is the modern plugs fall through the hole. Yeah, the hole was just so big the entire jack just whoop it fell through. Even the nut, it was just yeah, it's a gigantic hole. So I had to make up a little uh, spacer bushing here basically to be able to mount a modern style jack into that. Um, the radio, uh, like I say, about as mint condition as you can get. Really nice shape. Uh, once I get everything put back together, I'll shoot another little video clip so you can see this with the cover on. Same thing with the radio. But uh, it is a Cobra 29, so if you look inside, uh, just like pretty much anything else, vintage Cobra, of course it's not made by Cobra. It's just a Uniden. <laughs> That's who actually made it, so there's the board number, PC424AC. And you can see, even the GTL looks very, very similar to the later uh, 29 LTDs. Um, few minor differences, but yeah, for the most part, same radio. Um, now, one thing older radios like this had was they didn't, the bean counters, I guess you could say, didn't get involved as much when they built it. And from my perspective, as somebody that works on radios, the one thing I really liked about old radios and I really hate about modern, and I don't mean just modern like made within the last year or two, a lot of radios made after this, or most radios, I should say. Radios like this, before the bean counters got involved and were worried about every ten thousandth of a cent that you know, <laughs> was going into the radio to make it, uh, I don't want to say they, they splurged, but radios used to be built with proper test points, an actual metal test point to clip your oscilloscope lead or a test clip onto when you're actually doing, you know, an alignment on a radio. Yeah, they eventually did away with these nice metal test points and they eventually went to a wire with a loop on the end and then, yeah, there's just no test points anymore. There's a hole in the board. Or they expect you to clip onto the lead of a component, but yeah, it's one way it's easy to tell how old a radio is. Does it actually have test points? <laughs> so... Um, this one works great. Only thing that's been done to it is I replaced all of the electrolytic capacitors and uh, did a transceiver alignment to it. Other than that, it's still a basically a stock factory radio, just like it left the factory. A uh, good working radio. The microphone, on the other hand, this thing needed some help. Now, I believe this was a new old stock microphone. Uh, it has a short quarter. Now, if, 
any of you are familiar with Turner microphones, you're probably familiar that most Turner mics had a fairly long cord on them. The customer had actually cut this cord off at this length because he didn't want a really long cord. And he said then just to use the, the other piece that he had sent with it to make up a cord to go from the box over to the radio, which it had, but he wanted the new cord on there. Uh, that had never had anything on it. So I believe the microphone was an NOS mic, and from the looks of it, it was. Never used. Excellent condition. Um, just looks like brand new. Big problem was it didn't work. <laughs> so it's the main reason I'm doing a video on this. You buy a microphone just because it looks brand new. If it's an old mic, there's a possibility the mic cartridge might be bad. This isn't any good. This is the mic cartridge that was in the, in the microphone. Uh, just because a microphone or even if you buy a replacement microphone cartridge uh, unless somebody guarantees that it works, uh, it might not. It's a really good chance that it might have a bad mic cartridge. Kind of like electrolytic capacitors and radios, mic cartridges can go bad just sitting there. You buy a brand new mic, set it on a shelf, come back in 30 or 40 years, and it might not work at all. This one had such low output, it was, it barely get 1% modulation. I mean, it was just, yeah, just ridiculously low. So, it needed a mic cartridge. The other problem is, this microphone is not supposed to be used with a radio. So this is something to be aware of. Just because a microphone looks just like something you're familiar with seeing. So this microphone body that Turner used was very common back in the day. This is the same body that they used for the, uh, the uh, Turner SSB Plus 2. Uh, you'll see a lot of microphones uh, that came factory with radios or they were optional microphones you could get like a Johnson you know back in the day with Johnson messengers you could get the brown microphone had like a gold trim ring here but same housing just like a static Turner did the same thing they rebranded for radio manufacturers but just because this microphone looks the same doesn't mean that it was designed to be used with a two-way radio if you look up a, a Telex Turner 253 microphone, this microphone ain't made, meant to be used with radio. It's meant to be used with a public address system. <laughs> so, you know, back in the day, if you walked into your office in a school or any, you know, an office building, anything like that, that had a public address system, it might have had a microphone like this. So, yeah, it's a PA microphone. Um, that's something to be aware of because even if the microphone cartridge in this microphone was good, it would still not work with a radio. The problem is are the switch contacts. This only has one single switch element in it. That's it. Well, actually, there's two sets of contacts, but it's just one. There's two contacts here and two contacts here. When you push down the button, one set of contacts would attach the microphone element into circuit. The other set of contacts closed, and that was to for the PA system basically, I guess you know, to turn it on to put it into PA mode. But that's it. There is no switching, what I would call a normal switching set of contacts, which a radio like this needs. If you unplug the microphone from this radio, your audio goes away. There's no sound coming out of the speaker. That's because the microphone actually completes the speaker circuit to ground the speaker so you actually have sound. So you need a set of switch contacts. You need to have one that has three blades basically. One makes contact and receive and then when you push the PTT switch it, it switches down and goes into transmit mode. But when you look at any microphone like this, you know the Turner microphones that are designed to be used with radios, you're going to see two actual switch contacts on inside the microphone. And those two two set of switches may have one or possibly two set of switch contacts on each one of those individual switches. So I had to add a second set of switches to this. Now that got me switching. So I luckily had I still have a few of those left. Not many. I'm starting to run out of them. But so I'm able to get it so it will now switch the radio in and out of transmit and receive. We've got another set of switch contacts for for audio. The problem is we still have have no microphone element. Now you could try finding a replacement element, an original new old stock element to stick in there. Again, uh, just because it's new old stock, just like this microphone, doesn't mean it's going to work. It could be bad. Now, if the seller guarantees that it works, hey, that's great. You know, it, it's probably fine then. Uh, the other thing you can do is, and I see a lot of people do this, they'll buy another microphone to 
to basically steal the mic cartridge out of to put into their radio. Well, yeah, but now you're still left with another mic with no mic cartridge. I mean, yeah, you fixed this one, but now you've got another housing with it. So, yeah, it's Robin Peter to pay Paul type deals. So, some time ago, I bought a boatload of these little guys, okay? Main reason I bought them was it's got an integrated circuit on it that I wanted to play around with. It actually has a little tiny integrated circuit right there, you can see. And that's a microphone amplifier, but it is also an AGC. So it has an AGC circuit built into it, much like your radio has automatic gain control. So if you're listening to somebody way off in the distance, so let's say there's three people in a conversation. One of them is you. But one of the other parties is a long way away, really off in the distance. And the other guy is your next door neighbor. So radios have AGC circuits to help level out the volume basically coming out of your speaker. So when the guy that's really far away is talking and you've got your volume adjusted to listen to him, he's done, and then your neighbor keys up. He doesn't blow you out of your seat, but <laughs> you don't get blasted out because the volume's too loud. The automatic gain control tries to keep the receiver adjusted so that basically your volume coming out of your speaker isn't... it, it doesn't have huge swings. So it, it keeps it very, you know, in a happy range, <laughs> basically. The AGC circuit on this basically does the same thing. So for low levels of volume coming into a microphone element and for large signals coming into the microphone element, it tries to keep the output coming out of this board at a fairly continuous level. So different syllables when you're speaking, some of, some of them will have just more audio punch. You know, just like, Puh, you know, and, and t different sounds have different levels. Well, it'll help to keep those leveled out more, and if you're, you're varying your distance between the microphone when you're talking, the output out of the microphone, or actually out of this, will be a lot more continuous. It'll be a, a fairly level, you know, so if I hold the microphone in really close and then hold it really far away, the level's going to be, uh, you know, very close to being the same because it has that automatic gain control circuit. Uh, the little IC actually has three amplifiers built into it. it has an initial amplifier circuit, then it goes into a uh, VGA or an AGC controlled VGA, which is a very uh, the automatic gain control, and the VGA stands for uh, variable gain amplifier. And then there's a final stage, and this actually has three levels you can set this to. If you look on the little board. You can see it has 40, 50, and 60 dB, and you attain those different gain ratings by either grounding, floating, or applying voltage to the, the gain pin on this board. But the, the VGA, so as you, as I speak much louder, the VGA would start to clamp down, or it limits the amount of application of that variable gain amplifier. If I start to whisper, it'll increase the gain of that little VGA that, you know, the variable gain amplifier will increase the gain on that amplifier stage. So, like I say, it just helps to keep the volume at a much more consistent level. That way, you're, it basically prevents clipping, because clipping is a bad thing. Now, there are, you know, this is a compression module. There are also circuits that do clipping, but it's not the same type of clipping as I'm talking about. The clipping I'm talking about when you overdrive something is... You know, it's not the kind of clipping they're doing with little modules, let's say, like this. It's, a, it's the bad kind of clipping, <laughs> which makes your, your audio sound very choppy. So, like I said, I bought a bunch of these and wanted to play around with them, and that's what I ended up sticking inside of this microphone. I got in contact with a customer to let them know, yeah, my cartridge isn't any good. And I told them, I was like, now this, this little module... You don't have to buy one of these, you know, if you're interested in playing around with one of these little guys, you don't have to buy it from this company. Uh, I pr prefer using stuff like this because it's name brand, uh, so I have some confidence in the build quality and the components that are on this. Uh, but you can get little things like this on eBay and Amazon from China for pennies, probably a dollar or something. But yeah, it's going to be cheaper than this one. This one runs around $7, depending how many of them you buy. I bought a boatload of them, so I got a, a big price discount on them when I got them. But the chip is a Maxim chip. This is actually a little demonstration audio board is what this is. And it's actually made by, I think you see the name right there, Adafruit. 
Okay, and that's what they make. They're a, like a hobbyist electronics company from robotics to microprocessors and flashy LED things. You name the little widget for people to play around with, you know, DIYers, Adafruit sells stuff like that, but they have these little things. What's really nice about this is the circuit that is on this board, it's basically the demonstration circuit that Maxim has on their data sheet. So if you pull up the data sheet for that IC, that's what that is on there. That's the circuit that's on this board basically. And the only thing they did was was then stuck an electrete condenser microphone on here. So um, I, like I say, I saw these and I was like, man, that sounds really nice. An AGC controlled amplifier circuit for, you know, for a mic. I was like, I gotta play with them. And well, I'm here to tell you, it actually works really well. So I told the customer, you know, I played around with it a little bit before I go sticking it in the mic. Um, played around with it on a proto board. And yeah, I was happy with its performance. So customer said, go ahead. He, he wants to give one of these little guys a try. Um, I've stuck it in there and it's it sounds good. Um, so the one thing I will say with this, if you do stick this in, uh, you can down if you go to Adafruit's website, and you don't have to buy these from Adafruit. When I purchased these little boards, I actually got them from DigiKey. So most of your big electronic supply warehouses sell Adafruit's uh, products. So that's actually where I bought mine. But no matter where you get them, I suggest if you if you do buy this specific one here, um, go to Adafruit's website. They have. It's basically so simple, even a caveman can do it. <laughs> They've got, you know, the pictures they have on their website are really good. The, the instructions on how this thing works. Now, there's not much to it. You actually only need four of the pins on this. Um, the, uh, was it, AR pin? Yeah, it's the AR pin down here. You're probably not going to want to do that when that changes. Uh, there's actually, you could change other parts on this board to adjust timing and delay because uh, of the how fast it clamps down that AGC circuit but as it is it works really well with the components that they've picked so I wouldn't suggest doing anything with that AR pin it works good as it is so basically all you need is ground that top pin there VDD that's going to be your voltage source the gain pin that's actually right here that's that 40 50 and 60 dB so you would either leave it floating ground it or attach it to VDD depending if you want 40 50 or 60 DB again and then there's an output pin that's it like I say the a the AR pin you really don't have to worry about that when you can play around with it but honestly the the way this is set up works really well like this and that's it so it is power dose so that's the thing to remember you're basically turning like in this case I'm taking a non amplified microphone because originally this is all that was in this mic, was just a mic cartridge. And turning it into a power mic. So now you got to stick a battery in this. Now this is probably one of the worst case scenarios for putting a battery in it because <laughs> the original, like the SSB Plus 2s, they actually had a big cutout in the bottom plate of this uh, microphone housing the bottom plate that the battery went into because there's not enough room inside this housing to put a 9 volt battery. The battery actually stuck out the bottom of it. So yeah, without having to spend an hour or more playing around trying to make up a battery compartment, what I used was a BR two thirds, uh, what is that, BR two thirds C, so two slash three C battery. It's a a uh, three volt lithium battery. They're actually, you'll see those in a lot of test equipment. They're like memory backup batteries, but they're about that big around and about that long. But it's the right size that it'll fit inside the neck of this microphone body. Because that's the problem. I don't have the depth really. I can't really stick anything up here because the switch contacts are here. The push to talk button switch, you've got the two arms that come, the pivot points here. That yeah, There's nowhere to stick a battery up here. The only place would be back here and yeah, there's you're left with like that much room. It's just just no room. So yeah, that's what I used in here was a BR two thirds C battery lithium cell. So that should have a real those are good high capacity batteries. Uh, that should last a really really long time, a lot longer than a nine volt cell will. But uh, that's what's powering it. And yeah, so there's there's just an option. I thought I'd show this. You know, if anybody's interested, like I say, you don't have to get the Adafruit ones. Uh, I just like buying from. Uh, name brand companies, I, I know that I have an expectation of at least halfway decent quality of something like the microphone cartridge. I have 
brand name, you know, it's a it's a Maxim chip. It's not some cheap knockoff IC on there. You know, decent build quality, the whole nine yards. If you want to play around with some of the cheaper Chinese ones, have at it. You know, there may be some good ones out there. But yeah, like I say, this one right here works really well. And like I say, you can get these pretty much any of the big electronic suppliers or directly from Adafruit. Like I say, they run around $7 a piece. I got them for a uh, six dollars and something because I bought a, a large quantity of them but uh, and then to actually stick it in the housing there I just took some uh, foam basically wrapped around the uh, the, uh, the board here and just you know kind of compressed the foam and then pushed it back into the housing there so it also acts kind of as a shock mount so if you tap on the housing there's no physical hard connection. It's not like this board is glued inside this housing. It's mounted basically kind of in a shock mount because it's surrounded by foam now. And that, and that worked out very well also. So there you go. There's a... Let me get uh, everything basically put back together here. Um, I still have to reseal some of the cores with wax in the radio. And uh, you can uh, take a look and see what she looks like all put back together. Just a little bit of skip coming in today. are a little bit quiet today. About an hour ago it was really booming in. Must be tuning his amplifier. <laughs> yeah, he's tuning for maximum splatter. It's channel six, that's all those guys know how to do anyhow. And speaking of Channel 6, God, where did I put that card at? I had to write this down. Somebody... <laughs> that channel right there, <laughs> without a doubt, made my day when I read this. Somebody wrote on uh, the comment in one of my videos. I had to write this down. It was damn funny. He said, uh, if you ever want to know what untreated STDs will do to brain function, just listen to Channel 6. <laughs> He couldn't have hit that nail more on the head. <laughs> oh, what untreated STDs do to the brain. <laughs> so, in any case, there's the uh, radio all back together. There's, uh, here's, I don't have this in line right now, because like I said, I took the battery out of it. Oh, but this has a nice, uh, the old wrinkle finish, paint finish on it. So, yeah, like I said, you can see it's actually made by Vibratrol, and this is actually just a sticker on here, so I'm assuming it probably says Vibratrol underneath of that sticker, just rebranded by B&K. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, if you use one of these little microphone boards right here, the output of these things is ridiculously high. It is way, way, way too high for feeding into a radio. I mean, you'll need to have your mic gain set at, like, a uh, hundredth. It just barely turn it up and it'll, it would be enough. Um, so if you do use one of these, uh, for starters you want to go with when you set the, when you select the gain, because like I said it's adjustable between 40, 50, or 60 dB. So what you would want to do is attach the gain line right here, this center pin. You would want to attach that to the VDD, which is your voltage source. And that sets the gain of the last stage of that ampli that little IC. Because remember I said there's three actual amplifiers inside that IC. There's an in initial one, there's the AGC controlled VGA, and then there's the output amplifier. Adjusting the voltage or the 
either voltage, floating, or ground on the gain pin adjust the gain of that last amplifier. So if you apply voltage to it, it'll have 40 dB overall. That is still way too much for a radio. Um, at 60 dB, this thing will do like over 2 volts peak-to-peak -peak output. I mean, yeah, you can hook a speaker up to this, literally. You can hook a speaker up to the output on this thing, and it's fine. And <laughs> Now, you'll have horrible feedback, because, of course, the sound's just going to get back into the microphone element. But, yeah, this thing, actually, that little IC has a lot of gain for a little tiny package. So, what I did on the bottom of this microphone was just installed a uh, small trimmer resistor that allows me to adjust the output from this board. So basically the output pin goes to a trimmer resistor then out to the radio. So basically I can set, adjust it down to where when the microphone gains up, just like a normal power mic, it basically has a gain control on the bottom side now. So it's just like a normal normal mic. But that's something to be aware of. If you're going to use one of these things, they have an insane amount of gain. <laughs> these, if you put this up to 60 dB, these make good little, like, uh, what do they call those? Uh, super sniffer or magic ears or whatnot. You can listen to stuff like in... Norm, you can't hear with your normal hearing. It's that sensitive. If you put it on the 60 dB gain and point it at something where you can't hear anything, well, when you point this little microphone at it with 60 dB a gain, it's going to come in loud and clear. So, yeah, you really need to turn the gain down on these things. It's just insane. Uh, now, if you're interested in something like this that does not have the AGC circuit... If you go to the Adafruit website, they have another little board very, very similar to this. has a little IC on the back. Well, actually, it's not an IC. It's just a, an op amp. So it's an amplifier. And that's it. And it has a built-in uh, trimmer potentiometer actually on the back of the board. So if you want one of these, it's a little bit smaller size-wise. Not that this one's very big. I mean, this thing will fit inside a... Shoot, you could put that in a hand microphone. It's so small. But... Uh, if you don't want one with the AGC circuit, you can get Adafruit also has these, already has the microphone cartridge on it, you know, it's pre-assembled. Um, all you'd have to do is, again, hook up your voltage source, ground, and uh, the audio out to whatever it's going to. But like I say, it has a gain control in the back, but no AGC circuit. So you lose the advantage of the AGC, but it is, is physically a little bit smaller. So like I say, they have those as well if you go to the Adafruit website. But uh, there you go. So there's a Cobra 29 GTL, uh, B&K Cobra transistorized compression amplifier, and Telex 253 paging microphone. It's uh, now turned into a power mic, all set up and ready to go back to the customer.